Hi, I'm Scott Noonan, the CEO of Audio Advice. Today I want to walk you through an over-the-top luxury theater we installed. The homeowner was a complete movie and music fanatic and wanted a no-holds-barred theater as an addition to his home. The couple was building a new garage, which gave us the opportunity to design the perfect room, both from an isolation standpoint, but also for the ultimate theater. So the homeowner wanted five killer chairs in the middle for the five people in their family. These are the very best chairs we carry, but they also wanted the ability to throw big viewing parties. So there are actually 18 full seats in here, including these true theater seats in the front and true theater seats in the back. Because we could design the room from scratch, we made a 12 foot high ceiling, which gave us plenty of height so we could do a 12 inch riser in the back, 12 inch here, and give all the depth we needed such that every single chair has a perfect sight line to the screen. So now let's talk a little bit about the advantage we had also in the room dimensions. We had the ability to design this so it would be acoustically terrific out of the gate before we even treated it. So this is 30 feet deep and we're 19 feet wide and 12 high. You'll see, if you go to my home theater design best practices video, I talk about you know, how do you think about riser height, riser depth, and how do you calculate and think about getting the right room dimensions to make the acoustics good out of the gate. If you put those dimensions into the home theater tool at audioadvice.com, what you'll find is that at high immersion levels, you can get to a full 17 foot massive 2.4 screen so the customer wanted sort of an industrial look with some exposed speakers. And so you'll see here, we suspended the screen using Unistrut here and put the main three speakers right at ear level and exposed the massive sub 18s right below the screen. To power the video, we went with the Sony 5000 ES projector, which boasts 5,000 lumens with its stunning laser engine. We even added a panomorph lens onto the projector that enables 2.4 movies to utilize all of the light coming out of the projector, resulting in an amazing video image. I'll talk a little bit more about this at the end of the video if you want to understand how a panomorph lens improves the image from projectors. You'll notice that we hid the projector in the room behind the theater, which cleaned up the look and also removed fan noise from the projector. So let's talk about audio. The homeowners wanted the best sounding Dolby Atmos system possible and also wanted to use this room for music listening. If you've seen the video I did on the JBL Synthesis Theater with all hidden speakers, you know how amazing the sound is from a JBL Synthesis system. We wanted to leverage that same slam from JBL compression drivers in this theater, but we had the advantage of plenty of space for large, high-performance box speakers. In terms of audio, this is a 7.4.4 system. The front three speakers actually utilize the famous JBL 4367 studio monitors here in the center and on the right. But what's really cool here is we have massive JBL sub 18s. You'll see there's two here in the front, one in the right, one in the left. There's another two 18 inch subs in the back, but you will see a fifth sub here. What we did was quite unique. We actually took the Studio 4367 and this 18 inch sub and we bi-amped it such that it forms one center channel together to really give that powerful capability for center channel acoustics, people talking and everything else. When you think about deep bass impact during movies, you need to consider how much air the subs can move. With five 18 inch subs in the room, the roaring of engines at deep bass tracks are flat out incredible. For the surround sound channels, we used four commercial level JBL speakers that worked out perfectly from a size and performance standpoint. To continue the commercial look, we used JBL powered studio monitors for the four Atmos channels with some custom brackets we sourced from Germany. So we used the data set surround sound processor for this system. That enabled us to do some really cool things including direct room calibration, which enabled us to even out the frequency response throughout all the main listening positions. And you'll see, as you might imagine, we use a very high-end system in terms of microphone capability and a full-send core uh, analyzer in terms of audio. 
We did something really neat as well in this, which is we set up two sound profiles. The first sound profile is for watching movies. And as you might imagine, it uses all the subwoofers and all the speakers in the system. But the front two left and right subs, in that case, play typical LFE and rolled off sound from all the speakers in the room. When we change it to stereo music, which is something the customer loves, it actually changes the profile so that the left and right front speakers match up to their respective left subwoofer and right subwoofer and play left and right in the matching sub and studio monitors. If you wanna learn more about the importance of room calibration and how to best attack it, check out the videos I did on subwoofer placement and calibration, both of which are linked in the description. In terms of amplification, we're actually using three Mark Levinson amplifiers for the front. These are actually the 532s, and they're powering, each one of them powers one studio monitor from the left channel, and then the right channel is powering a sub. So we've got the left channel, the center, and the right. And then in terms of the other ones, the homeowner had some Rotel amps left that we're using for the rest of the amplification. So terrific amplification here. We cabled everything up with transparent cables and used Shinyata power conditioning. So the signal to noise of this system is fabulous. Combined with well-designed acoustic treatment, you could hear a pin drop in this room. The primary sources are an NVIDIA Shield, Kaleidoscape, and Arun Nucleus Plus. Each of these is the highest performance product in its category. An NVIDIA Shield is very similar to a Roku or Apple TV, but with a higher performance chipset. The Shield is used for watching Netflix, YouTube, and other streaming services. If you have not heard of Kaleidoscape, it is the ultimate movie watching server if you have the budget. You can purchase or rent movies that are then downloaded in bit perfect video and lossless audio with substantially higher quality than you can get from a streaming service. So in the Kaleidoscape, you can do all sorts of killer things. Like for instance, if you're searching and maybe you know you want sort of an adventure or action movie like this, and I pause on Avengers and you'll see it will actually bring up all the movies similar to it that I'm looking for. I can also search different ways. I could go up here and search by everything that I've rented or I've downloaded to my movie server. I, and you can see in this case, I could search literally uh, by letter, or I could go out and say I want to search for my dramas, or I could search by the cast, or I could even say I've only got a little bit of time left tonight before I go out on my date and search actually by the amount of time I've got. It's really pretty incredible what you can do with the Kaleidoscape. And then I could even go in here and I can search by my pause movies. I can come back and instantaneously hit them and start right back into them, look at different scenes, all the different songs on all my concert videos. It's truly the best movie server that you can have. Finally, for browsing and playing music, the home owner uses a Rune Nucleus Plus. Rune is the same thing to music that Kaleidoscape is to movies. It has a super advanced way of searching all of your downloaded and streamed music services, along with incredible navigation and browsing capabilities. The system is controlled by a Control 4 remote and can also be controlled from an iPhone or iPad. We programmed one scene-based keypad at the entry to the theater for turning on the theater and setting various scenes. To keep the clean look, we had all of the dimmers in the equipment closet behind the theater. All of those scenes are also available on the remote and can easily be modified by the homeowners. When you purchase a widescreen like this one and use zoom on a projector to fill the screen, you're effectively zooming the image so that the top and bottom black bars are off of the screen. What this means is that you're not getting the full benefit of the entire light engine of the projector. By adding a panomorph lens, you essentially tell the projector to squeeze the image and then the lens stretches it back, which enables you to utilize all of the pixels and light from a projector. So for people who love movies and want the best picture possible, a panomorph can be a great addition. Taking it one step further, the system also has the MadVR MV video processor. This video processor makes the video even better than what can be done standalone in a projector and does incredible real-time tone mapping of the HDR signal, which leads to better darks and whites. The end result is that the video and audio performance of this room is simply stunning. Okay, so I've paused 
a screenshot from Ready Player One. This is sort of a famous screenshot, but what I want to show you that the Mad VR is doing, look at how clear every one of these green pixels is right here, and look how dark it is in the bottom right corner, and then yet you can still see the brightness of the lights right here. The tone mapping that the Mad VR is doing on this particular screenshot's incredible. If you've got a movie theater, go pause, take a look at this, and see how clear it is. Obviously, it may not come totally through YouTube, but you get the point. Okay, so everyone always asks us to do at the end of our videos to actually show off the system. As you know, it's super hard to do it on YouTube, but I'm going to try to show you a couple clips. This first one is from the original Quiet Place, and uh, she's actually downstairs in her basement, and you're going to hear the monster. The Atmos in this clip is one of the best that's ever been made because you can hear the monster just above you to the left. I'm going to turn it on, and I'm telling you in this room, because of the depth and strength of the subs and where the placement of everything is, it's quite incredible. So we'll let it play here uh, just for a couple seconds. I don't know if you may or may not be able to tell, but it literally is rumbling the room. And you can hear the monster right now up in the top left as she's looking up. Incredible mastering of this track. So you can see she sort of looks around and the monster's coming down the stairs. But it is so crazy realistic. You can also see the video performance says how dark the darks are, the highlight recovery and the contrast recovery coming out of this, plus the HDR tone map. So if we look really quickly here at the very last scene of A Star is Born, you can see the powerful effect of having the HDR tone mapping between uh, the color of her face and this darkness over here, but also the texture of her skin. You may not be able to see it on YouTube, but it is flat out incredible on this projector and going through everything in the Mad VR. If you're thinking about building your own theater, stop by audiovice.com and check out our Home Theater Central that's got our free home theater design tool, lots of buyer's guides, how-tos, inspiration gallery, and lots of videos like this one. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe for all the coolest home theater and home audio content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.